Hello everyone, my name is Gustavo Riccardi. I am the founder and CTO at Cyber Software. In this webinar, we are going to talk about Thinfinity Virtual UI for Delphi. But first, a little bit about ourselves. I founded Cyber Software in 2002. We develop and sell communication products, mostly coded in Delphi and complemented with other languages and technologies. We currently have two product lines. One has to do with access to IBM mainframes, Air 400, and UDIC systems in the form of terminal emulators and software development kits. The other one has to do with remote access to Windows desktops and applications using any HTML5 compatible web browser. We'll focus today on Thinfinity Virtual UI. What is Thinfinity Virtual UI? It's a GUI remoting solution. It transforms your Delphi Windows application into a dual platform Windows web application with a single code base. Essentially, it redirects GDI, GDI Plus, and DirectX graphics to the web browser canvas and in turn sends mouse and keyboard input to the application. Additionally, it's a Windows to web integration framework. It lets you integrate your Delphi Windows application with the web, interacting with other web applications and resources. So let's see how it looks. We'll use an open source Delphi application called Zoom Portfolio. I want to thank Leslie Kay for letting us showcase this beautiful application. So this is a standard elaborate Windows application. It uses different types of controls like grids, tabs, charts, etc. and opens several windows and dialogues. It also uses an internal web browser. Migrating this application to the web could be a complex task. So now we'll see another way to take it to the web. Using Thinfinity Virtual UI, you can transform Windows apps into dual platform applications that can run natively on the desktop and also on the web browser. This means that the application GUI can be accessed using any HTML5 compatible browser from anywhere on the planet. Many users can access the application from different locations and devices simultaneously. So what do we need in order to achieve this? Just a single line of code. So we go to the project and then select View Source to open the application's code file. Then we add the Virtual UI Outer Run unit to the user's clause. If we open this unit, we see that this unit has a reference to the Virtual UI SDK library and when initialized, it creates a virtual UI instance and calls its start method. Now let's run the application. And we see a Thinfinity Virtual UI welcome message that explains how to access the application. We can choose not to see this message again and open the web browser manually or press this button, which opens a browser pointing to the application's URL. We are seeing now the same application on the desktop and the web browser. So, we have seen the application running under the Delphi IDI. This is called development mode. In this mode, the application runs as a normal Windows application as well as a web application at the same time. But what happens if we execute the application from the Windows shell? It will behave unchanged as a normal Windows application. This will be the regular mode. It's important to remark that in this mode, 
virtual URL code is like dead code. There's no impact on the application's performance or behavior. Finally, if we install the application into the Thinkfinity Virtual UI server, it will be able to run from the web in a multi-user, multi-instance fashion. This is the server mode. This graphic shows the server mode. Each time an end user accesses the application's URL, a new instance of the application is created and assigned to the end user. Each instance can have its own Windows user ID or share the same user ID. Up to here is the core of Thinfinity Virtual UI. Now we'll move to the advanced part. It is adding code to enhance the application behavior on the new platform. We have two main areas here. The first one in the form of methods, events, intrinsic objects, and standard behavior replacements. And the second one in the form of an object remoting framework. In the first case, we have access to the web browser information that allows us to adapt the application behavior according to the browser size, the user agent, etc. We all also have access to the web browser cookies and we can enable a standard open dialog replacement by a dialog on the web browser with file upload. We also have uh, a standard save dialog replacement by a dialog on the web browser with file download. And finally, um, local printing and remote printing. Then we have the JavaScript remote objects. That is a remote, an object remoting framework we devised to have an easy, powerful, and straightforward to way communication channel between JavaScript and Dolphy. We'll focus on JSRO now. In JSRO, the objects are defined and created on the Delphi side. Then they are sent to the web browser and mirrored. Every change on their properties data is synchronized with the other end. Methods fire events on the other end. This graphic shows the idea. So now let's see JSRO in action. We'll use the fish facts demo, which must be familiar to most of you. The idea will be to add a remotable object, expose some properties, and use this object from JavaScript. So let's start by adding the unit virtual UI SDK. This unit contains all the classes we need to access the virtual UI API as well as the JS Arrow API. We are going to create a JavaScript remote object that is represented by the class TJS object that implements the interface IJS object. We declare a variable holding an IJS object interface and define the read only property with its getter. In getRemoteDB, we create the remote DB object when the remote object remote DB property is used for first time. So let's see the creation code. We create the TJS object. Then we add properties we want to use in the web browser, category, species name, common name. Finally we call apply model that will send this definition to the web browser. Now we need to assign the data to the defined properties. And we'll do this in the data change event. Here we assign fill content to its corresponding property. So each time the database cursor changes, the new content will be applied to the properties object and changes reflected on the JavaScript side. 
Before going to the JavaScript code, we'll run the application to see the expected behavior. Here we can see the application running in Windows as always, and at the same time inside the web browser. This is called the development mode. The application is loaded inside the environment we, we call development lab, where we can see several panels that will help to work with JS array objects. On the right side, we have the object inspector, where we can see the DB object we created in Delphi along with its properties. If we navigate through the database, we see the application updating, but also the properties are updating. So far, we haven't made any change to the application. We are seeing the application as it is, so let's move to another URL where we will load in an HTML file with JavaScript code that will work with the JSRO object. In this page, beside the change in appearance, each change in the database selection will trigger a new search in Internet, so showing images related to the selected fish. Now let's move to the JavaScript code. We need to include the virtual UI JavaScript library. We use this library to both connect to virtual UI server and access the JSRO objects created in the application. This little code snippet has everything we need to do what we see. Here we define the virtual UI object and call the connect method. Here we create the local JSRO object that will act as a container of all the objects defined in Delphi. And we define three event handlers. One to know when the DB object is created and the other two for listening properties changes. In the object creation event, we save the object into a local variable. In the change event handler for the category of property, we change the content of the vertical banner we saw on the left of the screen. And in change event handler for the species name property, we look for the photo, share, photo search iframe and we change the source attribute appending the selected species name. So this is a nice and trivial example. I'm sure you will find a better integration scenario suitable for your own application. But I think this simple example shows the power of JS Arrow. How it compares with other virtualizations or remoting solutions? For instance, Microsoft Remote App, Citrix Setup. It provides a native HTML5 cross-browser cost device client, which means zero installation on the end user side. It is simple to install, configure, and deploy. It is also a solution oriented to developers to add value to their new or existing solutions. And not only removes the user interface, but provides powerful integration features that are not present in any non-virtualization or remote solution. How it compares with web development frameworks? Actually, 
is not a traditional web development framework. It takes your application as is to the web. Not more, but not less. It lets you save days, months, or even years of development time. And we all know what it means in terms of development costs and opportunities loss. We might like to continue developing rich Windows application and Virtual UI gives you an easy, cost-effective path to deploy it to the web. Finally, you may have a legacy application, the hundred thousands or even million lines of code. Are you going to start all over again? The Infinity Virtual UI lets you leverage that legacy code. With the Infinity Virtual UI 4, a house developer may use this technology to expand the reach of their Windows application and enjoy all the benefits of centralized installed software. Independent software vendors and custom development companies can use Virtual UI to get their apps ready for the web at the minimum cost, expand their audience, revitalize legacy apps and sell them again, or provide them their software as a service as in the cloud. You can get more information about the Infinity Virtual UI on the products page. Try the online demos and visit our blog where you can find articles, videos and tutorials. Of course, you can download and try Virtual UI for 90 days. Thank you all for attending this webinar and at your disposal for questions and answers. Can this product be started from a Linux server or is Windows Server needed? Uh, no, only Windows is needed. Uh, this is software based on Windows 8 and app. So we need uh, Windows 8 at least for development and even to use it at the server you can use it. But uh, um, also Windows 2, uh, 2012. Uh, uh, no Windows less than uh, Windows 8. And can it be run, uh, can you run your clients on things like iPads, Android devices? Yes, of course. Uh, all we need is an HTML5 compatible web browser. Uh, most, uh, most of the web browsers in these devices are compatible with HTML5, so there's no problem. And then if you, you showed at the beginning that you can connect to and virtualize any web application. So the question here, uh, can it work with older web applications? Yes. Uh, if, if we talk, uh, are talking about, uh, this question is about the web browser, uh, the, the embedded web browser, I, I mean the, the component, I, I understand is the component that you use in the Delphi application. In that case, it's like the demo we shown in the webinar uh, that is already using a, a web browser internally. But you can also use JSRO to move that web browser to the real browser outside of the application. So you, you can make this integration and, of course, uh, to gain performance, no? Uh, but yes, you can. Let's see. Uh, saying, in my case, may I update name on the web search schema and execute the new web query? Hmm. May I update name on the web search schema? I don't follow. <laughs> I don't know if that's changing the URI or the URL, but in your case, you were doing the query through. Um, you know, you, you'll know the fish name. Yeah, you, uh, we we have the, the server, and you have to the URL you put is the the, the server URL that. Uh, you can have a virtual paths pointing to your app. Um, I don't understand exactly what does it mean to what it means. So Christopherson with a web search scheme.
maybe he can explain. Yep. I know you can always plug in and modify a URL, but if, if search is happening inside the web app in some way, like through form fields, how might you push into a backend server app uh, a form field? I guess you could go to the document model and go and set a field inside of the document and then call the post method? Yeah, but uh, I, I think this, this this is a misunderstanding here because the application, the original application, doesn't change. Nothing changed. So uh, everything is going to work exactly that it was. This is more like uh, a terminal of the application. It's, uh, uh, you see, it's, it's like you're accessing via remote desktop or some other software. So you're using the application at this, and uh, there's no change on the, the any of the, the, the fields or what, whatever the application does. Um, all we do is to take the application at this is uh, to the web browser and what you can do is to integrate uh, the application with the web browser and in that case you, you could modify the, the application behavior and change the URL or change the way it behaves but mm, in the, 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 the basic form you don't have any change on the application. Okay. Uh, then, let's see, Miguel down in Colombia has four questions. Uh, is virtual UI completely independent of Windows remote control services and protocols? Uh, it's hard to say. I, I don't know what, what what it means. Remote remote control services and protocols. Uh, it depends on terminal services because uh, it uses, for example, for uh, Windows uh, Server, it uses at least one RDS session. For it uses one RDS session where he, all the instances of the application will be run. So uh, it depends on RDS. So I, I, I guess Windows Remote Control Services and Protocols would be uh, a requirement. Okay. Number two was: uh, Is there a solution for printing necessities? Mm, for printing necessities, there is a um, solution. It's not exactly uh, that we can print the, the document in the exact way as it is produced locally because we have the, um, the restrictions of the web browser. So what we do is to create, we, we install a, a, a printer that generates uh, PDF files and that those PDF files are sent to the web browser and on the web browser you can print it whenever, wh whatever you want. Uh, we also uh, have implemented uh, Google Cloud, Cloud Print uh, so you can send that, uh, this printing to the web browser but then you can redirect it to a local or remote printer without any problem. But the, the print itself is based on PDF right now. Okay, let's see. Number three, what about if the user needs to save to file or load to file? Uh, well, you have the, the standard save to file and load from file, but uh, we have the this. Um, change in the, the open dialog or set dialog that allows you to save a file making a download or loading a file making a download. So basically you, your application can interact with the web browser directly. 
So um, for most of cases, that will be all you need. But you can combine both uh, methods you know, to, to uh, receive uh, the, the file from the web browser or, or send the file to the web browser or use the local storage, uh, as, as always. Okay, and then the fourth one, for end-user support purposes, is it possible for the developer to have other remote PC browser, same image as the user? No, right now. It's something that we might mm, add as a feature in the future, but not right now. Okay, great questions, Miguel. There's some answers. I'm not sure if I did a good job or not. I hope so. Um, Craig has two questions. Let's see. One is, how do you handle a large multiple applications that link together, for example, a menu that calls another program? Well, all the applications have to have our Thinfinity code. So uh, we uh, uh, we can't uh, launch, for example, an Excel or Word or any other application that we don't have any control of the source code. So uh, if you have the source code, you can launch it too, and you, you have to prepare that application with uh, Infinity code. But once the application is prepared, is, is compiled with uh, our software, you can launch it without any problem. And all the application will appear on the same uh, uh, web browser window. And his second question, let's see. How are multiple users handled on one server? For example, if you have 20 users running on one server, would each user get their own running executable? Yes, exactly. Uh, all each user will will run its own instance of the the application on the server. All these instances will be run uh, in uh, in one terminal server session. Um, it depends the amount because there are some limits limitation on the uh, amount of uh, application you can run in one session. But in general, you can run like uh, 50 applications, for example, uh, at the same time uh, with just one session. So uh, each user will have their own instance. Uh, what are the licensing rules for users? Or for well, there is a licensing rule that has to do with, with our licensing rule. So you have to to license the software by user, a concurrent user. And there is a, a licensing rule that has to do with Microsoft uh, RDS. So there, this is a very complex topic, but basically you have to follow what Microsoft says. Is there some licensing information on the website if people go to the product page, for example? Yes, yes, there is There is license information uh, regarding our product. There is licensing information, of course. Uh, in general, uh, the, the question uh, comes normally from what, if you need to acquire calls from uh, Microsoft because um, you are using graphical user interface uh, through uh, um, RDS. So uh, in that, those cases, you need to, to ask uh, Microsoft because they have uh, their specific rules about that. Uh, they usually uh, charge a call uh, per, per, per user and user accessing its own uh, GUI software. So mostly they will tell you that uh, the, each user will need a RDS call, no matter if you are using one session or, N, uh, or a lot of sessions. 
Okay, uh, Richard says, I notice that the product is separated into workstations and servers. Does each client have to have a license to access it from the web server? No, there's no separation between works, workstation and server. I think uh, Richard is confused with another product. We have another product that is Thinfinity Remote Desktop that it has workstation and server versions. Not not this one. This one is only server version. You, you can say that you had the, the server version and the developer version. Yeah, the developer version is basically the server version with the library you use to to compile the application with, with virtual UI and and that's the one that goes on the developer machine. But there, there's no workstation version. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. How is your product different from remote desktop web access? It's completely different. Remote desktop web access is just mm, uh, is using the uh, remote desktop ActiveX to uh, present the remote desktop uh, to to the end user, but only in Internet Explorer uh, web browsers. Um, also. Uh, remote desktop web access is most to most used to uh, access desktops and also applications using uh, remote app. But this is a completely different um, uh, product because we are mm, uh, we're targeting to developers here. We are trying to to uh, give developers the opportunity to take their application to the web in a in, in very simple way and without uh, the need to install a lot of uh, server software, configuring, all of that. So this is uh, uh, only to, to remote or to virtualize their, their Windows applications to the web and also to make integrations with the web. Things that you can you can't do with a remote desktop web access, near other products of that type. Uh, the idea is that, for example, you have uh, an intranet application, and from you can have an iframe with our with your Windows application embedded, and you can interact from the intranet application with the with the Windows application and exchange data or control the, the Windows application. So this is more like a way to take this application to the web and interact with our other uh, web applications. So it's very, very different to any remoting solution. Uh, Paul is asking, can he still leverage INI files without changing any code? Um, can you repeat the question? I don't see the question, sorry. From Paul at 6.27 a.m. He's asking if he can still leverage INI files without changing any code. I, I'm, I'm thinking he's talking about his app that's using INI files. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. I, 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 like I said, uh, you can, the, the application runs unchanged, basically unchanged. There, there might be some changes you, 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 you may need to do. For example, if your application doesn't support to run multiple instances or things like that, like you are having a mutex or something that uh, don't allow to, uh, doesn't allow to, to run multiple instances or using, I don't know, some shared some share resource. But if your, the application is prepared or can be touched can be modified to be to run in in, in independent way. Uh, in, uh, the application can run without any restriction or regarding any files or DB access or whatever it it uses. Yeah, I guess if if he was saving 
some user information in an INI file? Yes, you, 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 may, you, you may need to take precautions regarding where you are going to save that, that INI file or, or because right now we are not doing any virtualization at uh, disk or file or registry level. So uh, you have to take into account that that INI file might be uh, shared with other users. So you have to, to identify the user, you have to use uh, different directories or different mini files, whatever you, you need to do. Uh, so you, you, you need to adapt, in, in that case, the application to, to work as a multi-user application. Uh, are there any timeout function in functionality to close open sessions? Mm, no, at this time, not timeout. It's a timeout of the application itself. There is uh, a timeout that had to do with the with no closing open session that you abandoned in the web browser. So with the idea that you can regain access to the already open application and uh, if, you, if, if it is con configured in that way. No? So uh, you can regain access to the application just because maybe you want to prevent that uh, any, uh, the user can close the, the web browser accidentally. So uh, but uh, there's no timeout for closing, uh, let's say that inactivity timeout or something like that. But you can implement it in your own code. It's, it's a matter of close the application and it will close the, the browser tab. Yep. Okay. Is it possible to have web balancing where many users execute applications? Yes, you can have the, the, the traditional web balancing. Uh, right now, we don't have a, a, a load balancing on our server implemented. Uh, it's something that we, we will put in place shortly. It's something that we have in our products we have. So uh, it's, it would be in there shortly. But uh, right now, you can use any other standard Web balancing. And Alf's just saying on spare time he works with gener genealogy. A uh, popular thing is to cooperate over internet about registering family data. Could virtual or the Thinfinity be used to make a UI for people that are accessing the same database on a server? Yes, of course, of course, of course. That That's uh, the main purpose of, of the type of uh, technology because you are you are accessing the, the, the application that has access to one one uh, database that that can use uh, that can be shared for for uh, several users or people and everyone is going to access different instances of the application but it, it will will work like a client server system. This, your application will, will be run in multiple instances, but will be accessing the same database. Eliseo asks, uh, is it necessary that both applications run at the same time, or can we decide what UI wants to run? Yes, I, I think uh, he means uh, if it's necessary to see the application the two views at the same time, the, the Windows view and the web browser view. Um, in that case, you, need, you will see these two views in development mode only. So it's like it's just to develop to see how the application looks. After so that, you decide if you want to use your application as, as, as it is, as, as a window application, you use it uh, just uh, um, launching it from the, the shelf as always. But if you want to 
um, deploy it to the web, you have to install it in our in Thinfinity Virtual UI server, and then you will be able to access to uh, through a new URL uh, to the server and see the, the application on the web. And then Richards asks, uh, if I purchase the developer license and write an application to demo it to clients, uh, can only one user view the application from the URL that is assigned to it? Yes, the, you can have, first of all, you have a free license that you can use for uh, the, this core, uh, the core of the virtual UI uh, remoting. Uh, you need a developer license only for uh, JSRO. Um, also, the the trial time is uh, 90 days, so it's, yeah, I think you have plenty of time to, to use it and demo the client. Uh, anyway, I see you, if you buy a, a developer license without um, users uh, for the server, server licenses, uh, you can demo the client and, and uh, with only one user at a time. Yep, yep. I'm trying to type, uh, which is not easy for me anymore. Uh, James asks, uh, does this work with FireMonkey apps? Yes, it, it does. It works as with FireMonkey apps, uh, with, um, uh, with platform Windows 3.2 or 64. So it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it has to be a Windows application. Uh, Eliseo is asking, is this like uh, an RIA, I guess, remote inter internet application? There was that whole category. I think that was being pushed by Adobe at one time. Um, this is um, it's a remoting of the application. You, you get uh, the, the application. Um, the image of the application uh, on the remote side and the web uh, the website, and you can combine it with HTML um, ele elements and all the what you have on the web. Um, so it's a remote internet application. If what you mean for RIA, RIA. But it's still a it's still a Windows application, right? It's it's still a Windows application. It's, it, it runs on the server, and it will it will run on the server. It will be uh, used from the uh, for uh, the end user will use the the application as it was uh, it were a client server application. It will, it will use a, one instance uh, of the application uh, as it were. Uh, in front of the machine. And, he, and Ellis was saying he really meant uh, rich internet yeah. applications. Rich internet I mean, applications. We've talked yeah. about them in all sorts of ways. There's different if, terms. Yeah. I, I think it's different because a rich internet application usually is uh, an application developed with widgets uh, that are HTML, HTML elements. So it's more like you have this or a lot of elements on the on the browser side, uh, and this is actually uh, more an image of the the, the remote application. So uh, if rich, it, because you see the, the graphics, uh, you see the uh, same application as you have in, in the in the, as a Windows application. But uh, I think if you mean the rich in your application by uh, those written with uh, rich elements on the web is not. Yep. Yeah, it's still a Windows application, so it's still... It's still, a, it's still a Windows application, exactly. Now, you know, you talk about Thinfinity for use with Delphi. Have you tried using the same components with C++ Builder apps? Uh, not, not, not yet. Um, um, this, uh, this product is... Uh, was designed to, to work with uh, many languages. We didn't try it with, Delphi, with C++, but uh, we have interfaces in with Delphi, C Sharp, Visual Basic, and, and actually the, the, 
the API is basically COM and uh, ActiveX. So the idea was to to have a, a common API for for every language. Yep. So we, of, of course Delphi is a first class citizen because even is is written in, in Delphi. Well, okay, Gustavo. Do you have any last words for to finish this uh, technology spotlight for developers? Yeah, well, uh, not just a, a remark that you can uh, try this product. You have also demos, uh, live demos in our website. On uh, you can see the the URL where you have the live demo. You can access and play with them, and you can download and try the product on 90 days uh, trial. And, um, and we'll be happy to, to help you whatever is in your project. And you can send us an email and we'll, we'll, we can assist you uh, with any project you might have. So those were all great questions. Boy, they, that's really good, Gustavio. Good questions for you and, and for Thin. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Good question. Yes, indeed. Okay, everyone. Thank you for joining us and Gustavio. Thank you for showcasing Thinfinity Virtual UI. It was really yeah. cool to see Delphi interacting with web applications, browser, HTML5 applications. Really neat. Okay. Well, thanks to you, David. I thank everyone to, to, for attending this webinar and for the question asked.